Ministry. This is Martha Monday. And so on Martha Monday, we step aside from our regularly weekly Bible study. And I usually try to share something a little practical, maybe a household tip. This week, we're talking reading, reading. And all of us probably, when we hear the word reading or we talk about books, we know we should read more. We really long to read more. If you're like me, you're a woman who is passionate about books and you just can't seem to stop buying books. We love books. We have favorite authors. We have classics. There's just something joyful about looking at your bookshelf and seeing all those delightful books up there. But if you're like me also, you buy them, but you don't always find time or make time to read them. I have books started all over the house, in the living room, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, by my bedside. And many of them I've started and then I get distracted and I never seem to get all the way to finish them. It's not that they aren't good. It's not that I'm not learning anything from them. It just sort of seems like that the tyranny, the urgent has me pulled off in a zillion different directions. Now, I read a lot of books, I really do, but sometimes there are books that are on a specific subject, especially if I'm studying to teach at a retreat or a women's conference or write an article or certainly when I'm preparing to teach the weekly Bible study, there are a lot of commentaries I read and some, some topical books along those lines. But there are also other books that I just long to get to just for my personal growth and my enrichment. And so I have decided that this year I have made a resolution that I'm going to intentionally and deliberately get through 12 books, one for each month. But I didn't go out and buy brand new books. I shopped, shopped my bookshelf. I went to my bookshelf and I chose 12 books. I'm gonna share those with you in just a moment. But I also want to first tell you how I'm going to read these 12 books. I am going to go back to something I did much earlier. When my children were little, we used something called Deer Time. We had Deer Time every day. Deer Time is an acronym that for me and our family represents drop everything and read. Drop everything and read. So I did it with my children successfully. Every day after lunch, I would pull them up on my lap or we would snuggle up on the couch together and we would read for at least 30 minutes every day, sometimes a full hour. We always had a read aloud going. When they were very little, it started off with just board books and picture books. And I remember just being thrilled when we finally got to the point that we could do chapter books. So we, we went to Charlotte's Web and the Chronicles of Narnia and the Little House books and on and on from there. Our dear time continued really even into their middle school and high school years. We always seemed to have a read aloud going. Sometimes we would do that after dinner. If the kids were still kind of taking a long time to finish, I just always seemed to try to do everything fast and I would eat fast and finish up and look around and they're all still eating and instead of just getting another scoop of whatever when I really wasn't hungry, I would grab a book and just read aloud to the children after dinner. I made it a party for my children. And even, I can tell you, I did a lot of things wrong as a mom. There are many, many things that if I had the opportunity to rewind the clock and go back and do over again, many things that I would do very differently. But today, all of my children are avid readers. They love books. And I hope or I believe that at least in a small way, that seed for books, that seed of, of loving to read and having a love for books and learning was planted all the, all the way back when they were little and we just made that a part of the daily rhythm of our lives. So I've decided if it worked for them then, why have I abandoned that just because we're now empty nesters and I'm home alone? So I'm going to give myself the gift in 2020 of dear time. There will always be dishes in the sink. There will always be laundry to be done and emails to answer and floors to sweep and a zillion other things that are on my list and on my job. But it seems like what we make a priority to do first happens and then everything else just either falls into place or it can be shoved into tomorrow's work. So this year, I'm going to try to make reading a daily priority. So I thought it might be interesting for you to consider giving yourself that gift as well, making reading a priority, even if it's just 15 minutes a day, after lunch or in the middle of the afternoon when you need a little pick-me-up. Even set the timer and tell yourself, I'm gonna drop everything and read for just 15 or 20 minutes, get that stretching of my mind, and then I can get back into the physical labor. 
So let me spend the rest of today sharing with you what I'm reading. Maybe it'll inspire you to want to get one of these books, or maybe I hope it just inspires you to look on your own bookshelves and go back and read what you already have. So what am I reading? Well, first of all, I always start off my morning with God's Word. Coffee and the Word, and um, maybe in an upcoming video, I'll go through my daily quiet time and what I do first thing in the morning, even before I jump in to do my study and my prep for teaching, what I do in my personal quiet time. This is an NIV study Bible. I've had this since the early 90s, and so this is my go-to for my precious time with my Lord every single morning. I journal, I read, I write, I worship, I pray, pray God's word, memorize God's word. This is where I go to first thing in the morning. Now, at the end of the day, at night, I've added in, um, I, I keep a Bible by my bedside, and it's a different translation. This is the New King James. I've decided that I, I want to begin having my day not only begin with God's word, but end with God's word. So when I'm with my NIV study Bible first thing in the morning, it is really that study time. I've got my highlighter and my pen and my journal and my note cards and my post-it notes. But at the end of the day, I'm in bed, I'm tired. It's just before I turn out the light. I'm, I'm not making notes, I'm not journaling. I'm just reading one, sometimes two chapters a night. And I decided for my evening reading, I would just start at, in Matthew. I'm just gonna read through the New Testament. I'm teaching the parables with our weekly Bible study, so I thought reading through the Gospels to begin with would just be a good place to plant myself. So I'm doing that at night right before I go to bed. When I crawl into bed, I have this book that I picked up, I think at Sam's Club a few years ago. It's called The Book of Amazing Stories. They're just little short stories, 365 days of stories that are just a, a true story from history or a, a character we may be familiar with, something unusual, and it always ties it back to a Bible verse and sort of takes that event or circumstance and weaves it into a devotional story. So I've had this for a while and it had never just picked it up. So it's, it's very short, it's one a day, and if you follow my teaching, you know that I often like to open my teaching with a real life story and sort of have a little parable or an analogy to jumpstart that. So I think this has given me a few ideas that might make their way into my Bible study teaching as well. So there's my beginning and my end of the day, but back to my dear time. So let me just show you what I'm going to do this year for my dear time. I'll add links to each of these below, and I'm gonna use my affiliate link on Amazon. So if you do end up ordering it, if you are just intrigued and you want to get that yourself, Cross My Heart Ministry, the nonprofit that I write and speak and teach from, will get a little teeny bit of a refund or a little payment back from Amazon, possibly, if, if, there, if there's enough. But if not, that's okay too, but I will put those links below. Just wanted you to know that they're an affiliate link. I made a little list for myself to use it and keep it kind of in my book, almost like as a bookmark, to remind myself where I am and what I need to be reading. So at the beginning of each month, I can sort of gauge, am I on track? Did I finish my January book? And when I start each new month, I'm sort of gonna look at how many pages or how many chapters, and then I can sort of gauge and, and pace myself to ensure that I'm going to finish that book during that particular month. So let's go. What am I reading in January? Well, I picked up this one by Kathy Lee Gifford a few years ago. It's called The Rock, The Road, and The Rabbi by Kathy Lee Gifford. My lifelong dream has been to go to the Holy Land. I have wanted to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, to walk where he walked, to see those places that I love to teach and read about in the Bible. As a, as a Bible teacher, a woman who's been teaching God's Word to women for many years, it's always been my fervent desire. And friends, through an amazing set of circumstances and an incredible provision, I'm going to get to do that this year. I can almost tear up thinking about it. I am ecstatic. And so Kathy Lee is helping me get ready to go on this trip. She has traveled there many times. She's just sharing some brief devotionals. There's some additional insight from a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Jason Sobel, that she has traveled with and learned from. I'm thoroughly enjoying this and it's getting me ready for that trip. So I'm gonna finish this one in January. Then my February book is going to be 
The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. Now, The Hiding Place is one I read many years ago. This was uh, a book that I read aloud to my children as well. Corey Ten Boom is uh, an amazing woman of God. She was uh, from a family that was persecuted. They ended up in a Nazi prison camp. They were protecting Jews. You know her story. Fabulous. And it's been many years since I've read it, so I've decided that I really want to go back and visit this book again. The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. Then in March, I decided to choose a skinnier book for March. It's going to be a very busy month for me. And so I picked up a book I've wanted to finish for a long time. My son Luke gave this to me. It's called God's Space by Doug Pollock. And it's the subtitle says, Where Spiritual Conversations Happen Naturally. This is a book on sharing your faith and sharing the gospel and having, making space for God in our everyday conversations. I started it. It was fabulous. I, I never cycled back to finish it. And so in March, I'm going to read God's Space by Doug Pollock. And so I'm looking forward to that as well. And hopefully I'll pick up a few tips on sharing my faith with those in my world. April. I am going to read The Insanity of Obedience by Nick Ripken. I read The Insanity of God by the very same author a few years ago, and it was life-changing. It was riveting. It was eye-opening. I read it the summer before I was going to be teaching through the book of Acts, and so many of those stories of the persecuted church all around the world just were amazing. And I wove some of those stories even into some of my teaching that year on the book of Acts. So The Insanity of Obedience, I'm looking forward to reading by Nick Ripken. I think that is a pen name. I don't think that's his real name because he's protecting the people that he interviewed all over the world. But on the basis of the other book by him I read being so stellar, I'm looking forward to reading this one again. Then I'm going to move on to Paul. And this will be in May. This is by Chuck Swindoll. Who doesn't love Chuck Swindoll? Uh, an incredible man of God, a gifted Bible teacher and scholar. I have read so many of his books during my adult life. I read his book on David, and it was inspiring when I taught through First and Second Samuel. And so because next year I'll be teaching through Romans, I thought what a great time to pick up his book on Paul. So this is Paul by Chuck Swindoll. I'm going to be reading that over the summer to get me prepared and ready to teach through the book of Romans. Also in the summer, I am adding a book by Piper. Now, John Piper, another incredibly uh, brilliant speaker, teacher, scholar, theologian. I've read several of his books. And um, this one I, has been on my shelf and I haven't gotten to it yet. It's called A Godward Life by John Piper. And so I'm going to get through this and uh, see what I can learn from uh, John Piper. There's always something fabulous to learn from him. A Godward Life by John Piper. Okay, then I'm going to pick up Decision Points by George W. Bush. So George Bush wrote this book. It's his biography. And he approaches his biography a little differently. He shares key decisions that he made throughout his life. So I'm, I'm interested in reading more about George Bush and his life and his journey to the White House, but also some of his personal life in here as well. So another nonfiction book. You've probably picked up on the fact that all of these are nonfiction books. They're all Christian authors. So I'm hoping they will all uh, teach me something. We share the same worldview, the same perspective, the same reverence and awe and love for God and for his word. So that's kind of my litmus test. Sometimes I read from other authors and kind of have to think differently, but I enjoy reading from other people that that share my perspective. Sometimes it's helpful to read from a different perspective so that you can sort of understand other people that don't share your viewpoint and your love for God, but all these are by Christian authors. Okay, in the summer, I'm gonna pick up another familiar one. This one's by C.S. Lewis. I think when I make my book list going forward, I'll just always plan to have one by C.S. Lewis. What an incredible man, a gifted author. Mere Christianity is absolutely a classic that every Christian should read. I also picked up a Mere Christianity study guide that has been written. Uh, this was by, is by Stephen Urban. So during the summer, when I'm not in such a rigor of preparing to teach, weekly, this will be a good time for me to incorporate another little study on my own. So Mere Christianity and a study guide will occupy me, I think I'm up to July now. In August, I am going to read a book by Elizabeth Elliot. She's kind of a mentor to me. I'm, I have never met her 
her personally, of course, looking forward to meeting her in heaven. But this, the, the shadow of the Almighty, is the life and testament of Jim Elliott. And of course, he's the missionary, her husband, who lost his life when they went in to share the gospel with the Aka Indians. And the cover even includes that beautiful quote that uh, is written by missionary martyr Jim Elliott, this quote attributed to him, he is no fool who gives that which he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. So that was the almost the prayer of his life and almost a prophetic statement that he made as he would later lose his life in going in to share the gospel. So I'm looking forward to reading this book by Elizabeth Elliott over the summer. Then we're, we're moving back into fall. Um, Catherine Marshall, another fabulous author. She is, a, is one that I read many years ago, read several of hers. This one is called Meeting God at Every Turn. I read this years ago and it was on my shelf and I thought, you know, uh, Catherine Marshall, a mentor to me then, a godly woman, I'm just going to pick that book back up again and read it. Sometimes the books are so good we need to read them again and again. I have a series that are bound in this beautiful cover on my shelf and I have them all together and they just look so pretty on the shelf with the, the gold writing on that rich burgundy that looks a little bit like a leather cover. This is called The Christian Secret of a Happy Life by Hannah Whithall Smith. I think she also wrote um, Hind Speed on High Places. That was a powerful book for me. I have not read this one, so I decided that in my Christian library, it's what these are called, I would pull one of those off, and so I'm going to read this one before the year is up. We're moving in now to December, and so I decided I needed to have a Christmas read on my shelf. I picked this up a couple years ago and never got to it. It's called Because of Bethlehem, Max Lucado. Wow. Not only does he have incredible thoughts and insights on the scripture, but he has such a beautiful way with words when he writes. I love to read his writing. There are many of his that are so wonderful. Uh, every year at Easter, I usually pull out God Came Near. Um, I think that's the one that I read at at Easter or is it Christmas? Anyway, I have two or three of his at, at different holidays that I love to pull out and read. So this one is called Because of Bethlehem. Of course, a, a book that he wrote for with devotionals. I think there's even some videos and some a study guide that can go along with this if you want to do a Christmas study. I've also added here to my shelf just a fun book that I picked up. I went to a little workshop. Dayspring is headquartered in our hometown, and they sponsored a little workshop. They have actually published this book by Megan Taylor. It's called Happy Hand Lettering. And so this is just fun. Uh, Megan loves the Lord, but she's done some, she's put together a book that is really very helpful in teaching us how to do pretty handwriting and what woman doesn't want to do pretty handwriting. So this is almost like a workbook. You know how when you were in elementary school and you had your handwriting? Well, this is a handwriting book for moms. And so I'm looking forward to just getting out my Sharpie and I'm going to try maybe on a Saturday morning or Sunday afternoon just to pull this out during the year with the Sharpie and just start practicing my hand lettering and try to work on making things really pretty for me this year. So there you have it. There's my list of 12 books that I'm going to endeavor and commit and challenge myself to get through this year. Maybe halfway through or somewhere along the year, I'll even do a Martha Monday video with a book review and let you know what I've learned and what are some of my takeaways from some of the books I read. Whether you read one of mine or whether you just go to your bookshelf and find one of your own. Maybe you're not going to do 12. Maybe you can just challenge yourself to have six books and you're going to give yourself two months to read one book. Whatever that looks like, just try to make it a priority. Turn off the television. Evaluate what you could let go of in your life. Maybe I'm reading something that's okay, but it's not redemptive, it's not inspiring, it's not filling me up, and it's not pushing me and growing me and stretching me in my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope I've given you some ideas. I hope that you'll consider carving out some dear time for yourself and make it a priority to drop everything and read a little bit every single day. Thanks for stopping by Cross My Heart Ministry. Happy Martha Monday to you. I'm Laura McFarlane. If you're a subscriber, you get an email every single time we publish a new video. If you're not, 
All you need to do is put your Gmail address in the box when you click that subscribe button and you'll start getting those emails. Of course, we love it when you like, we love it when you share our videos with others, and we love to hear comments. In fact, this week, I would love for you to leave a comment below and just tell me what is the book, what's the number one book that you are going to make it a priority to read this year? Beyond God's Word. I'm just going to assume that all of my listeners are reading God's Word. But what's the book that you're going to pull off your shelf or you're going to invest in and buy to drop everything and read this year? Until next time, I'm Laura McFarlane and happy reading.